On Monday, March 23, 1903, the Red House was destroyed by fire. The building would reopen on February 4, 1907. February 4, 2017 marks the 110th anniversary of the reopening of the Red House. The iconic Red House has been the traditional seat of Parliament for Trinidad and Tobago for over 100 years. With the foundation stone being laid on February 15, 1844, by Colonel Sir Henry MacLeod, the original building was designed as the new Government Administration Building. The building was to house the Legislative Chamber and the offices of the Governor, the Colonial Treasurer, the Attorney General, and other Colonial officials and the Law Courts. The administration building took four years to complete and quickly became a source of pride for citizens. The next time work was done on the building was in 1892. It was expanded in an effort to provide much needed accommodation. Two new buildings of two floors were erected on either side of the northern building, used for the courthouse, one to house the registrar, the other the record office. The current reference to it as the Red House came in 1897, when, to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, government offices were painted red. Six years later, however, during a protest on March 23, 1903, the Red House went up in flames. On that day, the new water ordinance to introduce meters and charge people for the water they used was being debated in the Legislative Council. A protest was held in Brunswick Square by members of the Rate Payers Association and other citizens as there was much public dissatisfaction over certain clauses contained in the ordinance. The ordinance to address this wastage had first been read on March 5th and debate was scheduled for 11 days later, but was postponed until March 23rd. During the debate that day, the crowds outside the council chamber became noisy and stones and bottles were thrown at the building. This attack prompted the governor to read the riot act and policemen were then given the order to fire on the crowd. During the fracas, the now famous Red House fire was lit. The blaze spread but fire officers from nearby Hart Street responded and the flames were quickly extinguished, leading to the current day saying among locals whenever an issue does not last long that it did not last as long as the Red House fire. When it was all over, the structure remained, but the windows, the floors and the roof beams were all destroyed. The Red House was no more. As the dust of that tumultuous day settled, the country began to mourn its dead. Questions were asked and answers had to be provided. A commission of inquiry was formed to determine the details of what led to that fatal day. The subsequent report detailed that 471 rounds of ammunition had been discharged. A total of 16 people were killed on that spot or died of their wounds through the use of authorized firing and 43 others treated at hospital for injuries received. The commission also concluded that the bringing of the bill without consulting members of the public informally, if need be, at first, and then bringing in the second reading within 10 days of publication was very unjust. As the commission concluded, it looked as though the government cared little for public opinion. The following year, work of rebuilding the Red House began. The debris was removed and used as landfill in Lord Harris and Victoria Squares. And after three years of work, the Red House was completed on its original site. It was opened on February 4, 1907 by His Excellency, the Governor, Sir Henry Moore Jackson. There was no pomp and circumstance to mark the day. The Legislative Council was called to order at 10.30 a.m. 
with members of the public witnessing the first meeting in four years at that site. The business of the council for that meeting was the repeal of additional house tax ordinance. His Excellency rose to address the council chamber and reflected briefly on the fatal events that led to a new chamber being constructed. But, honorable gentlemen, it is, I fear, inevitable that in entering into possession of our new abode, our thoughts should travel back to the old one and to the events which deprived us of it. I have no intention of dwelling today on incidents which are deeply regretted by all right-thinking people in the colony, the record of which we would gladly erase from history, but if we may not altogether forget as indeed it is not desirable that we should, their need, at least be no bitterness in remembering. Governor Jackson went on by appealing to legislative members to start afresh and always keep the constituents' needs uppermost. Today we leave that episode of the past behind us forever, and we turn a fresh page in the history of Trinidad. It lies before you open and unsoiled, and on you, honorable gentlemen, and your successors, chiefly depends what is to be written thereon. Your work is to be done in this spacious, lofty, and well-proportioned chamber. And shall we not try and mold our policy on the same lines? Let it be broad-minded, with nothing narrow or self-seeking in it. Let our aims be lofty, and our measures carefully planned and justly proportioned to the needs of the people. The 19 members present applauded lustily after the governor finished his welcome address. The afternoon session began with confirmation of the governor's minutes from the 17th December 1906 meeting. Those minutes dealt with the affairs of the Manzanilla Local Road Board and the reorganization of the Trinidad Light Horse, the name given to an arm in the colony's defense force. Other happenings in the proceedings included the motion of that sitting, which asked that the council approve the grant of an increase in monies to the Central Road Board for repair, maintenance, and the construction of roads in Naparima, Arima, and Caroni. After a vigorous debate, the motion was put to the council, and it was agreed to unanimously. The council meeting ended at a quarter past three in the afternoon and so passed the reopening of the Red House to the public after a bloody stain on its history. Since then, no major work was done on the building. In 2005, due to obvious wear and tear, a decision was made to begin restorative work. It is currently ongoing. The reopening in 1907 signaled a fresh start from an incident some would say is better not remembered. In 2017, we celebrate 110 years since the reopening of the Red House to the public. The Red House, the traditional seat of Parliament of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. On Monday, March 23, 1903, the Red House was destroyed by fire. The building would reopen on February 4, 1907. February 4th, 2017 marks the 110th anniversary of the reopening of the Red House. <laughs>